What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to have a new video on the Pi KVM. So if you're not familiar, the Pi KVM was a project that was made to make a more budget friendly KVM. It was based on the Raspberry Pi and I believe it's an open source project. And mine isn't in a case right now, but this is what it's going to look like when you're all done. So you have a CS2 bridge or I think it's CSI bridge, I forgot off the top of my head, but this is what makes your Raspberry Pi can use HDMI. And here's a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, you could use other Pis, but the Pi 4, I believe, is the one that's recommended for the best performance because of its hardware. And I also had this nice case that I printed up, but I need to do some modifying because these don't sit properly in this case. So I need to figure that out. But like I said, that's the Raspberry Pi, Pi KVM. I'm going to go over really quick some of the stuff so you can set one up too. So let's get right into it. So for this project, you are going to need a bit of hardware, like I was saying. I just double checked, so this uh, little maker board is a CSI bridge. So this makes it so your Raspberry Pi can use HDMI like natively through the ribbon cable. You're of course you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. Um, I've seen people use Pi 4s, 3s, zeros. I've seen a lot of people talk about it, but I think the Pi 4 probably gets the best response because of the hardware in it. So I'd probably check out one of those if you can. They have all the documentation on the Pi KVM site, which we'll go through really quickly after this. I just want to cover the hardware first, and then uh, we'll go through that. But I think the Pi 4 is probably your best option. You're going to need a USB-A to power block, so you can plug that into the wall. I got a USB-A male and female cable, because they're going to need that for the splitter. I got a USB splitter, so I have a female side and then two male ends. And then I also have a USB to USB-C to power the Pi. Now, this was my mix of hardware that I got. There's also an HDMI cable that you're going to need so you could use it off the board. And if you're going to use DVI, you're going to need a DVI to HDMI adapter as well. That stuff's kind of tucked into my mini PC, my rack right now, so I didn't pull that out. But this is like the base hardware you're going to need if you want to set up the Pi KVM the way I did. I found that this mix of hardware works pretty well. The only thing you're going to have to do is on your splitter, you're either going to have to cover the power pin, which I don't recommend. If it's not set up properly, you could short out and pass power through to the USB in your target machine. Um, they do make power blocks that you can put into USB adapters. That would probably be your better option. Um, but, you know, I recommend what you should do. Uh, don't do what I did, if, unless you want to. But, uh... You're going to need the USB cables and everything else, and then after you connect it all, you're able to, you know, if you get like a nice case, like we talked about 3D printing in the last video, you can print out one of these cases. I actually tried working with this case, but it just didn't have everything sit right, so, and I was still kind of troubleshooting everything, so I didn't get to put everything in place. But that's enough talking about the hardware, let's get into the Pi KVM. Actually, one more before we go through this. This was something that I really got confused with trying to figure out how to get this all cabled up. So let's just go through how I cabled it up really quick. So I have the female end over here of the cable. This is going to be what's going to power the USB-C to the Raspberry Pi. So that's what's going to use this USB-A to USB-C cable. So that's going to plug in like this. So now this end is going to go to the Raspberry Pi. Now, I have one end over here that's a USB 3, so this is going to go to my target machine because I want the USB 3 connection. And then I have this end over here that isn't USB 3, and this is what's going to go to the power adapter in the wall. So that's where this female to male USB cable comes into play. So I plug that in over here. Now I have the male end, and then I have my plug for the wall. And then that plugs in like that. So now I have power to everything. I have... I have USB to my target machine, and then I have USB-C to the Pi. So then the Pi will get the USB-C, the target machine will get the USB-3 on the, on the USB-A connector, and then the other one goes into the wall. So then you can plug all that in, plug your HDMI in, and then everything should come online. If it doesn't, double check your connections and make sure that the CSI bridge is connected properly to the Pi. It should be, that it's a little tricky to see, but you can see that it has that blue tab on the back. That should be facing your USB interfaces. So double check that to make sure it's right because that always confuses me with the ribbon cables. But I'm going to get this cable back up and plug it into one of my machines and we're going to take a look at the Pi KVM web interface. So before we can get really going with the Pi KVM, we are going to go over to their site and grab some of the information that we need. 
So, you have a whole bunch of stuff, and you can see actually there's Nova Spirits video on Pike AVM. So, shout out to him. He's the one who really told me about it and made me want to build one of these. I've actually been pushing this off for quite some time because you couldn't get pies for the longest time. But that's enough about that. Let's actually get into setting up the Pike AVM. So, if you go over here, it has documentation or the DIY, and we're going to do the DIY. And it's going to bring you over to a github page it's going to break down all the information on the diy pi kvm and it's actually going to give you all your hardware support so this was actually something that i had to read through quite a bit because try to figure out what matches and we can go through here and you can figure out all your stuff through here and then there's also more links so over here it's going to show you some more information so like the raspberry pi 4 board like i was saying you could use a, a pi 02w they're going to need one of the CSI bridges, or you could use one of the USB HDMI dongles. The CSI bridge is what's more supported, so I recommend that you get one of those. You can get the ATX capture if you want. I passed on that. Or you could do a VGA video capture. Pass on that as well. Here's the main parts, and then they give you some wiring. So that's if you're going to be wiring up the ATX controller. And if you're going to be doing that, there you go. So here's the USB and how they recommend to do it. So this would be something similar to how I have it, except they use a little board to split the USB power. That's also another good option as well. It saves it from having the power backflow through. But you can pick it up however you want, and I'll have links to all of the stuff that I got from my board and my pack AVM setup in the description below. So that's really the basics of the setup. The only other thing we have to do is grab the OS. So let me just grab that really quick. Okay, I had to take a look. Uh, they have the downloads in a few spots and they're kind of hidden, but if we come over here to the Pi KVM V2 that we were just looking at, they have the flash the memory card, and this is actually a link that'll bring you over to the OS's. So over here you can come through which one you're gonna grab. So I did the DIY Pi KVM V2 platform and I did the Raspberry Pi with the CSI bridge. So this is the one that I downloaded. I'm just gonna cancel that. Um, you can grab whichever one matches your hardware that you're using. If you're using a Pi Zero or a Pi Four, if you're using the USB dongle or CSI bridge, whichever one you're using is what you need to grab. The softwares don't interchange, so you need to grab it specific for your hardware that you're using. After you grab that, you just gotta flash it over onto a micro SD card, put it in the Pi, power it up, and then you're all set. The Pi should come online, and then you should get the Pi KVM portal. So now that we have our Pi KVM online and everything else, we do need to come over here and change the password. So I'm just going to putty in really quick. And I have a session saved for it. So I'm just going to log in as root. I put my password in. If it's your first login into the shell via putty or SSH, the, first, the credentials by default are root, root. They're different than the web interface's admin, admin. We're going to change both of those right now. So if I come over here to change password, you're gonna do read write. So now you can see Pi KVM is in read write mode. The Pi KVM OS is based off of Arch, so it's a distro of Arch. Next we're gonna do is password root. So it's P A S S W D, and then you're gonna put in for the root account. We're gonna change the password to something new. It's gonna confirm. You see now we changed the password. Now we could do kvmd tac ht uh, ht password set admin. It's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna ask for the password again. We want to set. It's gonna confirm. And now the password is all set. So if we come back over here, I could actually go back. I could do a terminal, and if I do sue, it's gonna ask me for my password. I think I typed it wrong, so we'll try that again. So I'll do sue, and then I'll put in my new password, and you see now I got root. And the same thing if I log out, admin, admin will no longer work, so I need to change it to my updated password, and you can see over here I did, so that works. So that's how you change your password in Pi KVM. Other than that, there's really not much else to do unless you want to go on your router and set up a static lease. You're all set to start working with Pi KVM and configuring your machines. One other thing you might want to do is if you start having an issue that you can't get your video to work, which I had in the beginning, is you can run a command to check your status. 
So it's system cuddle status KVMD. So this is a built-in command to check out the PyKVM info. So you can see that the service is running for the KVMD and it also breaks down your different pieces, which this was really helpful in me troubleshooting mine. So if you have a capture issue, it's gonna tell you capture device not detected or you know it, it can't get the image or it's gonna say that it can't get the HTTP site working. So this is really helpful to use to troubleshoot your Pi if you're having an issue with getting the KVM working properly. So again, it's system cuddle status KVMD. It's right up here if you need the command. This was super helpful in me troubleshooting my issues that I had. And the only other issue that you might have is the Pi KVM is specific to the target's resolution. So it's not going to be able to see all these images. So I just want to see if it has, I want to find the page that has the accepted resolutions and then I'll just show you really quick. So over here on the FAQ or somewhere in the documentation, here's the current resolutions. So the resolution must be greater or than or equal to that used by the KVM capture. So the maximum display resolution is 720 and the signal has a 1080 resolution. You will not see the image. The Pi KVM does not perform downscaling. At the same time, the Pi KVM will try to show at least something more than nothing. So if the input signal of the, has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and the display supports 1920 by 1080, the image will show but cropped at the bottom. So at least you have the opportunity to adjust the parameters. So what does this mean? So if you're running, you know, like your new Windows machine, uh, it's using 1920 by, you know, something else. It's probably going to have to get downscale for the Pi KVM to properly use it. So it's going to try its best to give you an image. And then from there, you're going to have to crop it and adjust the resolution so the KVM can actually work. I tried working with Proxmox and it seems that it doesn't like the resolution to do like a shell, um, a terminal connection to the Proxmox node. So I don't know if it's a resolution change in the BIOS or what it might be but you're gonna have to adjust your target resolution. It's always dependent on your target resolution. So if you use that like status command for KVMD and it shows it's connected and it's working, it's probably your target host's resolution that just isn't gonna cut it. So keep that in mind when you need to do any changes. So now we're gonna cover updating. This will be the last thing for the Pi KVM and then we're gonna wrap this up. So to start off, the image is probably a little outdated. There's probably new packages that need to be updated for the PyKVM package. So the, the command to update your PyKVM is PyKVM TAC update. But most likely, the first time you run it, it's not going to work. It's going to give you a command not found. And if that's the case, you're going to want to use this curl command over here. And then after that, it'll update the machine to the latest build. And then from there, you'll be able to use the PyKVM update command. So like if I come over here and I go back to a shell... I could do pi kvm tech update because I've already done the initial update. You do need to be root to do it. So we'll just do pi kvm tech update. And now it's going to go through and update my pi kvm. If I didn't do it that way, you could also do with the curl command, like I said, and that'd probably be what you're in need for your first update. But other than that, that's really it. And you see, it's going to go through, it's going to update to the latest packages. But that's really it. That's the Pi KVM. That's how it works. That's how we're going to set it up. And yeah. So I just threw everything back in the Pi KVM case I printed up. So you can see here's the case base. And then everything just kind of sits in there. It has screw holes, but they don't really seem to match up the best with my CSI adapter. But it has, oops, it has you know, all the interfaces for the USB. And then over here on the side, it has it for the HDMI. So it, when it sits right, it just kind of feeds through. And you can do it right through there and it gets mounted down but that's the pi kvm case so you might want to print yourself up one of these two or you could order one offline so after you get everything connected and your pi kvm plugged in and everything wired up you're going to go to the ip address of whatever your pi kvm is if you're not sure what that is you could use angry you could use angry ip scanner and you could put in your range real quick i'll just put in mine i have a zero and I have a 255, I'll just put it in this, because I have a slash 24. This will scan through your whole network really quick, and it'll tell you all the host names that it can resolve. And if I come through over here, let's see, still working, and there it is, Pi KVM is 125, so that works for me. So I'll just close this out, and then I went to 125. So you'd go do whatever address your Pi KVM comes up as, and when you first log in, it's going to be admin, admin, but I already changed that. So I'm just going to put in my credentials 
And then you're going to come to this screen right here. So you can either have a terminal window, which will give you a terminal into the Pi KVM, but it won't be as root. You'd have to still switch users to root. Or you can go back and you can do a KVM window. And you can see over here that I have a connection to one of my Ubuntu machines. So this is actually one of my mini PCs that run Ubuntu as a Docker setup. And I can come over here and I can type. Uh, let's see. So I can do uptime. And you can see it's all active. It's me typing in there. And it gives me my uptime. And here's where the KVM really comes nicely into play. So if you're not familiar with what a KVM normally is, in a server rack, you would have, you know, let's say three, four, five servers. You would have what's called a KVM switch, and it would connect to multiple devices. So you could use one keyboard, one mouse, one display, and you could switch between machine to machine, and you could have a serial connection in or a, a shell connection in, however it might be. So if you, you know, the machine doesn't have IPMI, which is another like back end server access thing, uh, but it's old and it uses outdated protocols and everything else. So it's becoming less common to have. The Pi KVM would be a really nice solution because it's supported. It works right in your browser over HTML. So it, it really is a nice touch. And we have a lot of different controls in here. So I'll just start off from left to right. We have shortcuts. So if you're on like a Windows machine, you can get your you know um, control delete or print screen or anything else, so you have your shortcuts over here. You can push text to it. So if you're working on commands that you want to push through, I could go over here. So let's say I want to do Etsy F stab. I can push through. And you can see actually I typed it wrong, but it pushed it right through to my shell. And there you go. It gives me the command. So if you're working with commands that you maybe are copying out documentation, you could just paste them in here and then it'll paste it, it'll push it right through to your machine. Really nice. You can record macros, so if you have certain keystrokes that you're constantly using to configure all your machines, you could record the macro over here, and then you could just send it through. Looks like you could also upload scripts, so if you have scripts for your machines you want to use, maybe a setup script, you could do that as well. One feature that I think is really nice is PyKVM is set so you could also upload ISOs to it. So if you want to, let's say, upload an ISO, let's say I'll grab that. So you could just select image to upload, or you can either get the URL from a link, or you could browse. And I have a lot of my ISOs already saved on my machine. But let's say I want to get the, you know, Proxmox 8 ISO. I could do that, upload it to here. And then from here, I could just select it. I have the Pop OS one in here right now. I could select it, and I could just push it through and you could flash it or it'll send it as a CD-ROM so you could do it either way but you could flash this onto the box and upload it right through there to flash a machine which I think is a really nice touch it saves having to go back and forth between USB drives and everything else the next box over here is ATX controls I don't have the ATX controller so I can't really go over this it's another board that I just didn't grab but you can grab one of these and you could have it set it up so on your target machine, you actually have ATX controls, so you can power down, reset it, and push these controls out to it. Next over here is our indicators for our network, keyboard, mouse, and display. You can change these around how you want. Um, I didn't really go too crazy with it. You can change the video mode, and you can reset the keyboard. You can show a keyboard, so, so you can actually get a keyboard on the screen. You can see I'm actually typing into it. So it's a really nice little simple feature in case your physical keyboard's not you know, doing it. You could also take screenshots of whatever you're doing, which again, is something helpful to have. You know, maybe there's some commands or something, an error that came up on the screen, you need a screenshot of it. You could take it right through the Pi KVM. And that's really about it for the Pi KVM in the actual KVM window. But this is really what it is, and I just got it all set up, and this is going to be a great tool, and we're probably going to use this more on the channel, so it'll be something that's not going to disappear. So that was by KVM. I know we've gone over a lot of different stuff in this video, but I just wanted to cover everything that I had difficulty finding in other videos or guides online. So that was all the information that I needed to get my Pi KVM working. So I hope it helps for you guys. I also hope that now that you have an idea of all the hardware you need, you could prevent the four Amazon orders that I needed because I kept realizing either I ordered the wrong product or I was missing stuff still. So I hope my guide will help you guys get your Pi KVM working a lot faster than it took me. And I hope it gets working right away so you can start configuring your systems. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Maybe even comment below what you're going to use your Pi KVM for to configure in your home lab. 
Like I said, I appreciate everybody for watching. I have a Discord server that I'll have a link to below. And I'll also have all the Amazon links for all the products in this video, as well as some of the other stuff that I use in my home lab below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.